Welcome to the training Captivate session on the Maxwell construction. We're going to be calculating the uh, equation of state using the Maxwell construction, which is a correction of the Van der Waals equation. Start the spreadsheet out by entering the gas and its Van der Waals constants up here at the top of the page. You also need to enter the gas constants. You want to use it in two different versions, one with liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin and the other in terms of joules per mole Kelvin. Now if you'll notice from the Van der Waals equation, we can't start the plot at a molar volume of zero because volume is in the denominator. In fact, we can't have the mo molar volume be close to the constant B because V minus B will go to zero and the pressure will go to infinity. So what we want to do is we want to start the molar volume at B but we'd like to plot about 2,000 points. So if you'll notice, this number of points in column A goes all the way to 2001. So what we have to do is have the molar volume be equal to the Van der Waals constant B plus one increment. And so we can just have that increment times the data point number and add that to the constant B and that'll be our molar volume axis. Then in terms of the pressure we're calculating, we enter the Van der Waals equation directly into here. So we're actually calculating the pressure that is calculated by the Van der Waals equation from your handout. What we really want to know though is what is the vapor pressure? We're actually going to put in an, an initial guess up here, say 150. And we can compare then the Van der Waals equation, the pressures, compared to the vapor pressure. Over here in the chart, you can see that we have the ideal gas law plotted. That's actually this column over here. You can plot that later on. But we also have the Van der Waals equation showing the loops, and then we have the Maxwell construction. What we're going to learn today is how to draw this line so that the areas above and below that line are equal. It's simple to integrate if you have a positive and negative region and you want the integrals of those positive and negative regions to cancel each other out. So what we would like to do is have the vapor pressure be zero. So this column is just the the vapor pressure, the Van der Waals pressure minus the vapor pressure. That would then set the positive values, the values above the vapor pressure, and the values below the vapor pressure are negative. If you'll see the definition of the Maxwell construction in your handout, we need to know the volume of the liquid and the volume of the gas. We can find those where the pressure goes past the vapor the vapor pressure in the negative direction. If you look at the chart over here, you can see that the slope is always negative when you go past the liquid volume and when you go past the gaseous volume. So we can use Boolean logic to find those volumes. So even though there doesn't appear to be something in this cell here, there actually is. Look at this formula. This formula is comparing the previous point in terms of volume to the next point. Actually, it's looking at the, uh, the pressures. If the previous pressure was positive and the adjacent pressure is negative, then you have crossed the vapor pressure line. When that's the case, then we want to interpolate to find the volume where this pressure minus the vapor pressure is zero. So you can look at the equation there and understand how that is an interpolation. I'll leave that to you. Then we copy this cell down all the way to the bottom and you'll see that it only pulls out the crossing points where there's a negative slope in the, vapor, in the Van der Waals equation pressure line. And this value is the pressure of 
the vapor pressure of the, I mean the volume of the liquid, and down here, this is the volume of the gas. I just used a max and a min formula here to pull those out of that column. So the volume of the liquid is here, the volume of the gas is here. Again, it's using this interpolation column. Now the integral region we can use those definitions and you can see that if either the volume is less than the liquid volume or greater than the gaseous volume then we just put a zero in that column. But it, if the other case would be it would be between those two volumes or equal to those two volumes and in those cases we want to return the van der Waals pressure minus the vapor pressure. Those are the values we're going to integrate. So this is the integral region. Notice how it blanks out the regions we do not care about and returns only those regions, the curved loops around the condensation region. We're going to integrate those curved loops. Finally, those curved loops are integrated here. We have the sum of that whole column times the delta x value, which in this case is volume, so delta v. And that is the numerical integral of those two loops that we see in this plot. Finally, we use solver. It's under the data ribbon. Click on solver. We want to set the integral value to zero by changing the vapor pressure. And you can see that that is now the vapor pressure at a temperature of 600. We can then change this whole chart by changing the temperature. Let's go to 500. Notice we do not have a a valid vapor pressure. You can look at your plot and say it should probably be around 60 or 70. So let's go with 70 atmospheres. And that's good because our integral is fairly low. We'll do a new solver. Hit enter. And we have now the vapor pressure at 500 Kelvin. You do this five times for each of the gases. each temperature and vapor pressure you will want to copy and paste into a table and here I've I've pasted several values for water and then you want to calculate 1 over T minus 1 over T initial so for me I define my initial temperature as 373 the boiling point of water and then this is 1 over t, which is this value, minus 1 over the initial, so this happens to be my initial value, so it's going to be 0. You can see this value is actually 1 over initial minus 1 over the current temperature. And this is r times the natural log of p final over p initial, just like the handout shows. And then I plot these two columns. and you see that my slope then is the delta H of vaporization. I want you to repeat this for five gases. I want you to do water, I want you to do propane, and then three other gases. And I'd really like it if you chose different gases from your peers. There are several van der Waals constants for gases in your book, and you can share data when you want to look at the accuracy trends at the end of the lab. I know this is a rough walkthrough, but I think this is enough to get you over several of the humps that will be uh, irritating in this lab if you did not have this tutorial. And if you have any questions, I'm sure Carl can help you.